Let's explore the steps required to set up the synchronization for the offline data access on the mobile devices, and the solution is Oracle Database Mobile Server. The first step in this process is to create publications of the data so that the data is accessible to the mobile devices. Second step is to add Oracle Sync Library to the application on the mobile device. Then we will need to set up access management so that the data is provisioned specifically per each device user. Then the application that we develop in step two can be packaged and deployed on the mobile server. Once the application is packaged on the mobile server or on any external app store, uh, the application can be downloaded and installed on the device. As a sample case for users who need offline data access, Let's use for the demo a smartphone application that helps FedEx drivers track their packages. So the scenario that we want to support is FedEx drivers at the beginning of the day picks up all the assigned packages and st starts delivering them. As the packages are delivered or picked up, um, the status of the package is updated and once the FedEx driver returns back to the base, uh, they're able to synchronize uh, with the available Wi-Fi or any other network, and update their daily status. Here in this step, we will publish the data for the mobile clients. The data is on the mobile server, uh, on the mobile server repository. Um, so I've already created a publication called Transport and added a couple of tables to it, trucks and packages. We also need to add another uh, table called Routes. So let's take a look and see what are the steps required to create this publication item. Right click on publication item, create publication item, and then we'll go through the wizard that will allow us to publish um, an object in the Oracle database that we can then synchronize to the mobile devices. So let's call it routes. We want the synchronization to be fast, refresh, And the table that we're publishing routes is actually in the schema master. So let's look at the master schema and we see the object routes, which is what we want. We'll select all the columns for this table. The index will be the primary key index. We don't need any other indexes. And click next. This is the publication item that we're going to create. It's going to be called Routes. Uh, the database uh, object type on the client is SQLite, and refresh mode is fast. Click Finish, and the Routes is done. So once the all the tables that or syn uh, synonyms or views, all the objects that are needed for the mobile client application are created, um, then they should be grouped together in publication, which basically groups all the objects that are needed by an application on the client. So here we just added routes, and we need to make sure that it's part of the publication. So when we look at the publication items, so far we only have trucks and packages, so we'll also need to add routes. It's already listed. It doesn't need to be updatable in this case because it's just a lookup table for routes. And we can leave all the other options to be equal to their default values. An interesting thing to note is that mobile server allows you to subset clients' data individually. Um, we have what's known as subscription parameters, which allow you to set parameter values for individual clients. And just in this example of the transport demo, we can see that, for example, for publication item packages, if we look at the query, we actually create a query that does subset the packages only specifically for the client or the driver that's doing the synchronization. So we added the subsetting clause, or the where clause, um, which specifically selects for packages from the assignment table where the client ID equals to this client ID variable. And that variable is set for each individual driver when they uh, synchronize so that only their own data will be synchronized to the device. So now that we have performed step one, which is to publish the definition for the data on the client, let's move on to step two, 
adding Oracle Sync Library to your existing app. So let's say we have an application on a device. In this case, we'll use Android device, but uh, iOS devices or the embedded devices could be used, the mobile devices. So it's a simple application that will do the management of the packages. So driver logs in and is presented with a few buttons, basically one to pick up a package, another button to update existing packages, and um, that's pretty much it. And then another driver can log in with the driver and driver login button. So how do we add synchronization uh, component to this application? First, we'll add a constructor for the OSC session, which is the main class that is used to control synchronization in the client. The constructor is very simple. We just pass the username for that class. Next, we will save the password for the user, which is provided on the login screen. And finally, we need to set the mobile server URL. Again, that could be something that's um, hard-coded to the application if the mobile server URL is um, set before the application is deployed, but in this case, we allow the users to enter the mobile server URL. Next, we can add a um, menu button with sync, and the menu button will, once it's activated, once it's pressed, will call the start sync function. And the start sync function, the main purpose of this function is to start a thread, and this, this thread will do the synchronization. Um, basically, there's just one call for the synchronization, and that's uh, M session sync that will initiate the synchronization. And this is that function. So let's see what the app will look like once we added the synchronization. Um, we're logged in into the main screen right now. We can go driver login. Once the driver logs in, press the menu button and click sync, which will then synchronize any changes that we have on the client back to the database and bring any changes from the database from the mobile server back to the client. And the client is, uh, and server are in sync. And that pretty much is all that's needed to add the synchronization library. All the packages and whatever needs to be updated can continue to be updated. Um, and the next sync session will propagate the changes back to the server. Also, this could be set up as automatic sync, but for the purpose of this demo, we will allow the user to invoke the sync manually. Let's proceed to the next step, step three, which is to package the application and deploy it on the mobile server so that the clients can download it. To package our application, we will use another tool called Packaging Wizard. It's included again with the mobile server SDK. Uh, the Packaging Wizard allows us to specify the application name, uh, virtual path, which is the location where the files will be stored on the mobile server, um, the description of the application, local application directory, which is where we we would put the um, transport demo APK file. And finally, the publication created in step one, where we publish the data that's needed by the application. So once all those are specified, we'll click button next. And then we will proceed to specify the files for the application. In this case, we have the transport demo. Click finish. And it's just a matter of creating the jar file that we can pub publish on the mobile server. So we'll just specify create this packaging jar file, I'll specify location of this file, and um, once everything is done correctly, we'll get the prompt that everything is successful. Now let's go to the mobile manager, which allows us to publish the package application. We'll click publish application button and that just specify the location of the file. Save it on the scratch. Demo. Next. And that's the jar file that we will publish. Once the file is published, the application is registered in the mobile server, and we can see it in the list of the applications right here, codex. 
Now that we're done with the package, packaging of the application, we need to provision the application to the mobile server users. So that's going to be step four, application access management. We're going to use mobile manager to provide access to the application. And let's take a look at the application that we previously published, FedEx. Currently, if we look at the access tab for this application, there are no users or groups assigned to it. So let's assign drivers, the, that's a group that's going to use the application. So let's provision the application for them. Click the Save button. And the application now is provisioned for drivers. So all the members of the group drivers should be able to download and access the data for this application. And we're ready for the final step in this demo, which is install the application and synchronize it with the mobile server. In order to download the applications, users would need to open up the web browser and go to the mobile server setup page. On the setup page, they present a list of devices that are enabled for the mobile server. In this case, we will use the um, SQLite Android device. It downloads the application, the setup application, which the user then clicks and installs. Once the application is installed, we can register the user with the mobile server. So in this case, we will use user P. Stevenson, which is one of the users who is in the drivers group. The username password and the server URL. Again, the CRL can be preloaded, but in this case, we're letting the user specify it. And we start installing the components of the mobile sync client, device management agent, application update manager. And that concludes installation of all the mobile server uh, components. Again, those are, this could have been pre-installed, but we're just going through uh, the full installation uh, process. Next step is uh, we need to run the Oracle update, which will then register the device for the mobile server. And once the device is registered, we can see a list of assigned applications to the user. In this case, we can see that this, the FedEx application is assigned. And we can click Install. Um, and then install the application. It goes through standard Android application installation. Um, we can click open and that's going to be our application Then, in the application we can again log in with the driver's credentials enter all the required information Driver logs in. And then to get a list of the packages assigned to this driver, we'll click the sync button. Sync operation was successful. And we can take a look at the packages assigned to the user. In this case, the user just has one package assigned to it with the status new. Once the package is delivered, the user can update the package to, well, first the package is picked up, so we can set it to in progress and update the database central database by going again to sync so the update updated status goes to the back end and once the package is delivered again the status can be updated to complete it and once the user is able to synchronize with the mobile server the status will be propagated and the status in the uh, main repository will also be updated and that's pretty much the, uh, the end of the demo for using mobile server for enabling offline data access for uh, mobile devices.